I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We are here today to worship God, to give him thanks, praise, glory, and all the honour for the life of his precious son and faithful servant, Ivan. We're here to share God's abundant, overflowing comfort with those nearest to him. Isabel, Ari, Kyle, Jennifer, Aaron, and all the family. Let's stand, uh, remain standing and sing together our opening hymn, I Need the Every Other. <laughs>
Aaron's minister, the Reverend Roger Higginson, is now going to lead us in prayer. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Gallagher. Just before we pray, can we extend our sympathies to the immediate family circle? We got to know Ivan well over many, many years. And it's been a privilege to get to know some of the family circle. And yet we're saddened by the events in which we've met. And so we extend our sympathies to Isabel, to Irene, to Kyle, to Jennifer, to Aaron, Nicola, Rebecca, Philip, Jack, Lydia, Rachel, Grace, and the wider family circle. It's good to know today that there's a saviour that the Bible describes as a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The old hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So we're just going to come before the throne of grace now and we pray that the Lord will bless you today, encourage your hearts, and that even at a time like this you might come to know the Saviour whom to know his life eternal. So let's just pray and seek the Lord together. Our gracious God and our loving and eternal Father, we humbly and reverently and quietly come before the throne of grace just now, in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we have just been singing these wonderful words, and we acknowledge them afresh even now, as we come before the God of heaven in prayer, we acknowledge, O oh God, that in this world we need thee so, so much. And Lord, we acknowledge that we need thee more than we will ever know this side of eternity. In every trial, in every decision, in every crossroads that we meet, in every burden that we bear, and especially at times like this, we acknowledge that we need thee. And yet we thank thee, O oh God, that the hymn writer could say, that wherever we seek thee, thou art found, and every place is hallowed ground. And so, God, our Father, we come before you just now in the precious name of thy Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We're so thankful for a Saviour who came from glory and came into this world to ultimately go to a cross and to shed his blood for our sins and to redeem us and to bring us back to God. And Lord, we're thankful today for many in this funeral and thanksgiving service that know Jesus Christ as Saviour and as Lord. And we're so thankful today for the difference that Jesus Christ makes in a life, in a home and in a family. And we're thankful, O God, for the gospel of redeeming grace. At times like these, O God, we are reminded of the brevity of life, also of the certainty of death and of the reality of eternity. And your word reminds us, O oh God, to be wise and to consider our latter end and to prepare to meet our God. And we just thank you, Lord God, for this family sermon. We thank thee, Lord, for the life of Ivan Harbinson. We rejoice, O oh God, in a father and a husband and a grandfather. We thank you, Lord God, for a friend and for a neighbour. And Lord, I know us today that many have heavy hearts. Many hearts today are breaking over the sudden calling from this scene of time of Ivan Harbinson. And Lord God, we thank you today for the grace of God that Lord is able to meet us at the point of need. And we pray, O oh God, for Isabel. And we ask, O oh God, you will comfort her heart just now. And not only today, but tomorrow and throughout the rest of her life's journey, may she draw much comfort from thyself. Thank you, Lord God, for Irene and Kyle and for Jennifer and for Aaron and for all of the grandchildren as well. And Lord, for the whole family, sir, the Lord, we pray that you will speak today into our hearts and into our lives. And grant, O oh Father, that the comfort of God might be your portion. Thank you, Lord God, for... Lord, for Ivan, Lord, and even how he loved to sing these old hymns that we've been singing already. And Lord God, we thank you today for the song of the soul set free. And even, Lord God, for the record of thy word that speaks of the redeemed and glory, singing praise unto the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so, Father, just go with us now throughout this service and throughout, Lord, the days that lie ahead. May the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, be exalted. 
And may there be many today that will come to trust in the Saviour. So Lord, accept of our thanks and also for the assurance that this family circle have that the Lord is in control and that Lord God, Ivan Harbinson knew the gospel and had trusted the Saviour even in recent days. Hear and answer prayer and lead us on with yourself. Bless Reverend Gallagher as he conducts this service. Help him in the Saviour's name. And Lord, may we receive with meekness the engrafted word of God and is able to save our souls. We pray in the Saviour's name. Amen. Thank you, Roger. We're now going to have a, a poem and a reading from God's Word, uh, read by uh, two of Ivan's uh, granddaughters, uh, Nicola and Rebecca. golden heart stuck beating, our working hands at rest. I broke our hearts to see you go, God only takes the best. They say that memories are golden, or maybe that is true. But we knew we never wanted memories, we only wanted you. Your life was love and labour, your love for your family true. You did your best for all of us, we will always remember you. We sat by your bedside, our hearts were crushed and sore. We did our duty to the end till we could do no more. In tears we watched you sinking, we watched you fade away. Although our hearts were breaking, we knew we could not stay. Our lips cannot speak how we loved you, our hearts cannot tell what to say. But God only knows how we miss you, but our hope that's only today. Reading taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, and that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Thank you, uh, both of you. Your, your grandest heart would have been soaring to, to hear them. We're now going to have a, a, a tribute uh, from two of Ivan's children, Aaron and Jennifer. <laughs> Ivan Harbinson, he was a husband, he was a dad, he was a grandfather, great grandfather, he was a brother, brother in law, uncle, but most of all, he's a friend of all of me. Where do you start to tell a life story with a man who meant so much to so many? Firstly, can we start by thanking each and every one of you for coming along today to help us to celebrate his life. We've been overwhelmed over the past few days by the lovely comments and the stories about Dad. They're all fantastic memories of the true character that he was, the man who loved his family with all his heart. Evan Harbinson was born on the 19th of December 1941 to William and Margaret Harbinson on the list from Brooklyn area. Dad was the ninth child of 14. He also had one stepsister and two stepbrothers. 
And if your maths is good, that's 17 in total. They may not have had much growing up, but they had loving parents, and as a family were so close and still are to this day, with his sisters Olive, Florence, and his brother Cecil being at his bedside when dad passed. There were so many stories from their youth and the antics that they got up to. As Uncle Cecil said in the hospital, what happened on the Lisbon Road stays on the Lisbon Road. Dad attended Glenady Primary School at Bally Cecil with his brothers and sisters. And when asked or probed about his education, he told everybody that he went to Glenady High School as it had two steps up into it. When he told tales about his time there, it was mostly about the tricks and the pranks that he played on the headmaster, Mr. Walker. Dad left school at the age of 13 and a half and started working for Bobby Martin, moving on to work for McCullough's of the mill, delivering meat to various farmers around the country. He then moved on to work for Norman Stewart, followed by Martin Bakers, and finally Dad finished his working career for the DOE Water Service at the filter beds on the Glenavy Road, which we passed very slowly on the way down the road. Our more time was spent playing darts than actually working, although Dad said he was the only one that ever did any work there. In the summer of 65, Dad must have had an epiphany after reading Psalm 121, <coughs> as he lifted his eyes to the hills, and that is where he found his beloved wife, Isabel. Dad married Mum. Isabel Tinsley on the 3rd of April 1967, and they set up home at Mrs. Scott's at four score. Aaron and Kyle joined the family in 1968 and 1970, and then they moved to Bigger House on the Stradiford Road, where I joined them in 1971, and Aaron completed the family in 1972. Dad was working for the DOE Water Service at the time and was offered one of their houses, so we moved to the Rushy Hill in 1973. The house just off the flying kilometre, and that's where Dad's passion for motorbike racing started. Mum was already a big motorbike fan, and this became one of their common interests over the years, and they travelled to many motorbike races together. Dad also helped out at the Ulster Grand Prix, and was well known around the paddock for his infectious laugh, and could be found on many occasions having light refreshments in one of the riders' tents, or singing one of his old favourites, Jeffrey Jig, to a captive audience. Dad's great love was his family, and that soon started to grow when Erin, Jennifer, and I married, bringing Rodney, Brian, and Jennifer into the family. I just want to just take this opportunity to publicly thank you, Rodney, Brian, and Jennifer, for the love, the care, the compassion you're showing to my dad, our dad. Dad didn't see you as his sons and his, his son-in-law, sorry, and his daughter-in-law. But he loved you like his sons, and he loved you like a daughter. But as we continue, um, his greatest loves came along. Nicola, Rebecca, <coughs> Philip, Jack, Lydia, Rachel and Grace. Grand Ivan were known affectionately as Grand Cap, was our biggest fan. Dad always had a special spark in his eye when they were about, and you daren't have scolded any of them or you were the worst in the world. They could all pull on Grand Ivan's heartstrings, and they had him wrapped around their wee fingers. When he could, he supported them in school events, whether it be the GB, the BB, the GFS displays, stock car racing, football matches, Although on many occasions he had to be told to calm down, as he was more competitive than the grandchildren. <laughs> Jack was grand as blue-eyed boy, until his great-grandson James came on the scene. James was just grand as Ivan's wee man, and he loved to see him coming to visit. Cousin Arnold shared a story with us about the man our dad was. And when he called on Uncle Raymond's and the Fanny Arnold's children were there, they all got sweetie pounds apiece. Well, inflation has really taken off since then, Avril. Any time that James called, Dad insisted they got a tenner <laughs> for sweets, and it didn't matter how many times she told him not to. Mum and Dad lived at the Rush Hill for over 30 years, but as Dad's health started to decline, Mum, Dad, Kyle moved to a bungalow in Benson Street, where he would spend the rest of his days. 
The main aim of them moving from the Rushy Hill was to downsize and have a smaller garden. But if anything, their garden at Benson Street was probably bigger, and I can testify to that. <laughs> Dad and Mum both love gardening, and for those of you who have been in the house will know that their garden is a masterpiece. We were made mow the lawns at Rushy Hill, but there wasn't a chance of any of us getting behind the lawnmower in Benson Street, because it had to be done to perfection. Although we did really finally hand over the lawnmower to me and the garden, uh, but that was mainly under his supervision and not without him having a few critical comments. Dad was a member of the Pride of Glenavy LOL 618 and RBP 286 and was a proud member of those organisations having served as worshipful master in both. Dad recently received a 60 year medal at an event in Nevada and he was as proud as punch and a tad emotional when his nephew Keith presented him with this medal. Keith had his all in tears when he called Dad Mr. Pride of Glenavy, and no better name for the man who loved his lodge and did so much around the hall when he was able to and put so much into any fundraisers that they had. No one will ever fill those shoes, although he has passed some of that compassion and drive onto his sons. Dad was also a founder member of the Pride of Glenavy Accordion Band. And him and Mum were our biggest supporters over the years. He was probably best known for leading the band, and it didn't matter who shouted at him, he never took his eyes off the road and took his role very seriously. Although I do remember him letting his guard slip when he was joined by a lovely lady in her Union Jack dress at the 12th of July demonstration in Adelaide, <laughs> and the two of them dancing right over the bridge in front of the band. Dad's love for the pride, as they are now called, lives on in his family and his adopted family and that shows the guard of honour at the gates of Novaya. Glenavy was always his home, no matter where he lived, and it was once said that if he was cut down the middle like a stick of rock, he would read Glenavy the whole way through. Dad also loved Glenavy Methodist Church. This church played a big part in his life. He was baptised and attended the Sunday school here, and has been a regular tender for the years. And even in the more recent times when he wasn't able to attend, Dad listened to the service on a Sunday morning and sang along. On a Sunday here, when he did attend, there was no denying his presence in the congregation, as even from his regular seat in the back row, his singing would be heard as far as the Pigeon Town Road. <laughs> Dad was also a big uh, sports fan, having played football for Glen FC in his younger days with his brothers. They were playing in the old Crocs matches at Civicway. Um, I can still see those knobbly knees running out onto the football pitch in Crumlin. He threw darts uh, for Bolandary B team and was a member of the Stuker Club in the Protestant Hall. When he got too old to run around the pitch, he took up a much slower place game, game, but was no less competitive. Dad started playing goals for Dundrod Presbyterian and Pond Park. I'm sure there are many stories to be told about his time when Skip shouting at his teammates that they could not hold. He took an interest in his grandchildren's sporting careers, following his grandsons Philip and Jack when they played for Glenavy, shouting at them from the sidelines and being very complimentary at all times, telling that they couldn't even play Ludo. <laughs> there are so many tales and stories to tell about Dad, but we would be here forever. On behalf of Mum and all the family, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you again for being here today. To those who called at the house, messaged, sent cards, brought food, the list is endless. Your words of comfort and prayers have been very uplifting to us and a testament to how well loved Dad was. We apologise if we've forgotten anyone it is not intentional. To the doctors and staff of Glenady Surgery, especially Andrea and Marion for all their help over the past few years, they really did go above and beyond. We should thank uh, Connected Health, who attended to Dad on a daily basis following his discharge from Lesburn Intermediary Care Centre in August. A special thanks to John and Scott, who had Dad enjoyed a bit of banter with. I'd also like to thank Reverend Gallagher and the leaders of the Navy Methodist Church for conducting Dad's funeral today, and Reverend Ken Lindsay for conducting the family service this morning at Benson Street, and for his dedicated visits to Dad over the past few years. To the doctors and nurses of Ward 7B in the Royal Victoria who looked after Dad from his mission on Tuesday to his final hours on Monday morning, their care and compassion did not go unnoticed by the family. 
finding mum. We also want to thank you for everything you did for dad over the years. When you and dad exchanged wedding vows 56 years ago, those vows included the words in sickness and in health. Little did you know that there would be more years of sickness than health, and it was your love and care that pulled him through most of it. Dad died as he lived, surrounded by his loving family. Just in conclusion, as it has already been said, Dad loved this church. And it's been already said, he loved to sing the old fashioned hymns. And the first hymn that we sang was Dad's favourite, I Need Thee Every Hour. At times, I would have chatted to Dad about where he stood before God. Dad often said that one day he would make his peace with God, that he would get saved. Dad knew that being baptised, being a member of this church, living a good life did not warrant him a home in heaven. And he knew that the only way to get to heaven was through Christ. He knew that plain and simple. Because the Bible says, and Dad knew this, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. When Dad was taken into hospital last Tuesday, I, I was concerned and I con contacted a good friend, the Reverend Thomas Martin. And Thomas said that he would call in to see my dad. And he, last Saturday, he called in on Saturday morning and spoke with my dad. My dad was low and he asked a simple question, Ivan, are you saved? And the first time in all his visitations, he was able to reply, yes, I am saved. And he asked me again, Ivan, if you were to pass away today, where would you be? And he said, I'd be in heaven. Today, I and my family don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Because we have the peace and the assurance of passive understanding. With Dad, it's, it's not goodbye, it's just good night, because we will see him in the morning. As I said, Dad loved to sing hymns, and I'm going to try just to honour him. I'm trying to sing a hymn here that was one of his favourites, and um, it's titled The Circle Be Unbroken. You know, my dad's in heaven, I believe strongly he's in heaven today. One day again, I will see him, but what about you? Have you seen my dad? Do you love my dad? He's all dead. And he loves you. But will you see him again? The only way you can get to see him is you come and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And just sing a few verses of this hymn for the circle, Be Unbroken. There are loved ones in the glory whose dear forms you often miss when you close your earthly story will you join them in their bliss will the circle be unbroken by and by by and by in a
beautiful and all encompassing tribute to a man who had a full and rich life that, that left an impact in, in so many places. And, and the impact of that life is seen in the vast number of people here today in the church, in the hall, upstairs, across the road, and countless watching online as well. Let's stand and sing together once more. Love divine, all loves except you. Difficulties to deal with. 
One of the things about Ivan that struck me the most was his deep, deep love for his family. Not just his own clan, but his siblings' clans as well. I've rarely seen a, a, a wider family circle closer to each other than the Harbisons. And Ivan was at the centre of it. His beloved Isabel, his children, their spouses, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren were what filled his life with colour and joy. Their milestones and successes caused his heart to soar and his face to beam far more than his own ever could. Their sorrows likewise cut him more deeply than his own ever did. No matter what he was having to deal with at any particular moment, he had all the time in the world for them and there was nothing he wouldn't do for them. The love that flowed out from him to his family abounded back from them to him. Every one of them did what they could to help him and they were all there for him when he needed them most. I have a wonderful family, he would often tell me, in a humble and deeply appreciative manner. It was one of my great privileges as a minister to witness Isabel's tender, selfless, loving care toward Ivan in recent times. Believe it or not, he didn't always do what he was supposed to, or stick within the limits <laughs> set for him. But with unending patience, complete understanding, and without the slightest hint of irritation, she would work with him and coax him gently back onto the right path. In their marriage, God's unending, selfless love for us was modelled in a profound and impactful way. As well as his love for his family, Ivan also had a, a deep love for his church family in Glenavy. I love my church, he would often tell me. <coughs> his love for Glenavy Methodist didn't take the place in his life that should belong only to God. Rather, he loved it because of his love for God. This was the place where he heard the message of salvation in Jesus Christ from his youth, where he gathered with his fellow believers to be built up and edified in, in the faith, and to sing heartily unto the Lord, how that booming voice from the back seat has been missed in recent times. Ivan served in leadership for many years, and made a, 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 a lasting impact in, in numerous areas of church life. He was a, a driving force in many a project, not least the construction of our new hall. As much as his contribution and generosity will be greatly missed and leave a massive hole, his presence is missed even more. He had a deep interest in and, and, and affection toward everyone connected to the church. He likewise was held in affection by all. Before every visit, I had to make sure I was on top of my brief. How many were at church? Who was there? Who wasn't there? When was the last time they were there? Why have they not been there? And he had far more of the answers than I had. He couldn't understand why people wouldn't come to church <coughs> to worship Jesus Christ when they were able. This was a greater concern to him and, and vexed him far more than the future of any building or institution could. Every time I prayed with Ivan in the last couple of years, his personal faith in Jesus Christ was apparent to me. I could sense him praying along with me and, and clinging in complete dependence to the one we were praying to. He would often tell me that the Lord was the one he turned to, that the Lord was the one his hope was in. He was not put to shame. He received peace, strength, assurance that was greater than the adversity he faced. Ivan's life was a finite, imperfect reflection 
of the Heavenly Father's infinite, perfect love for us all. <laughs> Enter the Father's embrace as his child like Ivan did. You likewise will discover his love is enough for you, and that his love will sustain you in every adversity that befalls you. The way to enter is through putting your trust in the one Ivan put his trust in. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus proclaimed. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is salvation in no other name. Jesus laid his life down on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. So that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Believe this day in the Saviour. As Ivan would long for you to do. And what was proved in his life will be proved in yours. The grace, peace, comfort, assurance and strength he gives will show itself to be greater anything this world has to throw at you, including this sorrow. In your Saviour's arms, by his love and care in relationship with him, you will be carried through every trial and tribulation of life <coughs> into your eternal home that he has prepared for you. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We thank God for his word, reflected to us through the life of his faithful servant and precious son, Ivan. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, When the Trumpet of the Lord Shall Sound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
immediately the service and we'll be in uh, St. Aidan's uh, Parish. Uh, and after that, there will be tea and uh, refreshments for everyone in St. Aidan's Hall. And if you'd like to greet the family, uh, please do so in the hall and not at the gravesite. Let us pray. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. We thank you that Ivan had that assurance in his heart through his trust in you. We thank you for how that trust sustained him in recent times. Lord, we thank you for, for your love poured into his heart, which he poured out to his family, his church family, and everyone here. We praise you for the impact his life has made. And Lord, we, we just thank you for, for the hope he had. And Lord, for everyone here, for, for Isabel, for the entire family, may we find that same hope in you, that same trust that Ivan also had. May we be sustained by it in the days ahead through all that we face. To you be all the glory, all the honour, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Here we pray. Amen.
Thank you.